Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Friday. It is May 22nd. It's what? May. Oh, sorry. Friday. Right. Yay, <laughs> everybody. We know it's a holiday weekend uh, and a lot of people are going to be off on Monday, of course, because it's Memorial Day. And an interesting little study found that a lot of people don't really know what it's about. We apparently have and very badly confuse well intention, of course. Yeah, we keep confusing Memorial Day with, with Veterans, Veterans Day. Day. 43% of 2,000 Americans surveyed were aware that the holiday honors military members who died while serving in the armed forces. Only 43%. Yep. The poll conducted on behalf of University of Phoenix found 28% of respondents confused Memorial Day with Veterans Day, a holiday honoring all military veterans for their service. But it is a common mistake. 36% of people admitted to not knowing the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Less than half. 46% respondents knew Memorial Day is celebrated on the last Monday in May. And slightly more than a fifth. 21% believed the holiday actually falls on the last Sunday of May, but it doesn't. It's a Monday. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this kind of surprised me. Half of Americans polled were also clueless about the term gold star family or families lost a loved one in military service. Yes, um, once it was explained though, 55% of those said that they plan to do an act of kindness for a Gold Star family on Memorial Day. And another interesting thing, half did not know what the moment of remembrance is. And that's where you hold a minute of silence to remember those who died during military service. So despite the confusion, 83% of Americans say it's important to commemorate the day. Most popular ways to celebrate, flying a flag, 43%. Leaving a flag or flowers on the grave of a fallen soldier, 30%. Or flying a flag at half mast, 29%. And coming one, up. Yeah, I was just going to say one more final note about the moment of remembrance, just if you want to take part in it. It is going to be at 3 p.m. Monday, Memorial Day. And instead of saying Happy Memorial Day, we have some alternatives for you. That's coming up at the end of this newscast. Because it's a solemn holiday. It is. Happy doesn't happy veterans day works because it's honoring veterans who are alive precisely so we will talk more about that coming up at the end of our show let's take a look at your rundown william bryan jr witnessed the deadly encounter between two men at Maud arbery bryan was arrested but maintains he was not involved in the incident now faces charges of felony murder and a criminal attempt to commit false imprisonment dozens of people had to evacuate a hotel after an electrical short it happened after 10 last night at the sabred suites on northeast through 410. fire investigators say a multi-plug in the basement shorted out causing the fire alarm to go off more parks beaches and businesses are opening in time for memorial day as a coronavirus death toll nears 90 5,000 nationwide. The latest numbers of COVID-19 here in Bear County in San Antonio, there are now 2,300 cases of COVID. Deaths increased again to a total of 64. The numbers of recoveries, rather, has also increased to 1,200. The inflammatory syndrome linked to COVID-19. It's affected mostly children, but now some doctors are seeing the illness in young adults in their 20s. Young adults have a more serious response affecting their heart and other organs. Memorial Day weekend is the unofficial start of summer. But this isn't going to be the typical holiday weekend. Barbecues, if we're doing them, make sure that we're having the barbecues outdoors with as much space as we possibly can. Prices at the pump are slowly rising because of increasing demand as more people return to work. AAA says the national average is $1.93 per gallon. This weekend, you have a chance to save some cash. It's the state annual tax-free weekend on energy and water saving products. Look for the Energy Star label. For toilets, shower heads, and faucets, look for the Water since logo. Pac-Man is 40 years old. The maze video game debuted in Tokyo Arcade on May 22nd, 1980. Date night in South Jersey, pandemic style. Patty and Nate decided to dine out along the Jersey Shore in a pickup truck because dining in still isn't allowed at New Jersey restaurants. <laughs> Right now, we want to get you updated on a deadly crash we told you about uh, earlier on GMSA. Katrina Weber's been covering it for us all morning long. She has that update and joins us live. Katrina, what have you found out? Well, good morning. Uh, police confirmed that they believe they have found the 18-wheeler involved in that hit and run, that deadly hit and run early this morning out on I-10. That truck is here parked. Uh, we're right behind the shops at River Center Mall. This is Crockett and Bowie Streets. They found this car. They had gotten a call about a suspicious vehicle parked here at the scene. Police put two and two together. They noticed the front end damage. They believe that this is the truck that was involved in the crash. They do have a man in custody, but they say that he is telling them he was not the driver of the truck. He says he was fast asleep in the back and he thought he felt a bump 
And then they uh, ended up coming down here, and he says that the driver took off running. Police are looking for surveillance video to confer confirm that. Now, I want to show you video from the actual scene this morning. This goes back to about 5.30. Uh, police say that a woman's compact car was rear-ended by an 18-wheeler, the 18-wheeler which kept going. The woman died there at the scene. Police told us she was not wearing a seatbelt. They think she may have been ejected, but they're not sure how she came to be on the road. But again, police did track down an 18-wheeler that they believe was involved in that crash, and they are continuing to investigate this scene here this morning to see if they can track down who was behind the wheel at that time. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks for the update, Katrina. Let's take you outside live with live cam. Boy, that just looks like a humid day. Uh, it's so humid out there, and... Uh, we're still waiting on some of that humidity to turn into rain. We're not seeing any on the radar right now. There are still more chances, though, as we go through uh, Memorial Day weekend. Temperatures right now, 80 degrees at the airport, 76 Kerrville, 73 Rock Springs, 80 in Del Rio. And the forecast looks like this, 20% chance of rain today, 30% chance coming up tomorrow, and a 60% chance on Sunday. We'll see some cooler temperatures, too, I think because we'll see more clouds and that potential for rain. But right now, it looks like Saturday night into Sunday morning, probably our best chance, but even through the day on Sunday, we'll have uh, some chances of some downpours. Here's the setup right now. We had some storms trying to make their way down towards I-35. They died out right around Austin. So we're going to be all clear right now. And you look at the satellite picture, eh, there's plenty of clouds out there. We'll see partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies today. Uh, pollen count showing the mold is in the high category. Grass is low, mold starting to creep up again. And the forecast for today, 85 noontime, 92 by 5 o'clock, 20% chance of rain today, just a 20% chance. But again, those chances do go up. We're going to try to diagnose this sort of complicated forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, sir. 410 at Highway 151. There appear to be no major delays in that area. We'll keep an eye on these cameras for you. Well, this morning, at least one lane of I-10 at uh, Medical was closed down after two cars hit a light pole. It happened before 5.30 this morning on I-10 westbound on the access road between Callahan and Medical Center. The light pole came down. At this point, police still don't know how the pole fell, but it caused two cars to hit it, and a third one barely missed it. Drivers say they didn't see it until it was too late. One car had major damage to the front end and undercarriage of the driver. And the other car said that it three flat tires, but no other damage. The driver suffered minor injuries. A Pakistan International Airlines plane has uh, crashed into a residential area in the city of Karachi. Pakistan's aviation ministry said the Airbus A320 was carrying 99 passengers and eight crew members. The flight took off from Lahore and was due to land at 2.30 p.m. local time, but it disappeared from radar. There are reports the pilots made a mayday call saying they were experiencing technical problems. At least 11 bodies have been taken to a local hospital there in Karachi. It's unclear if the victims are people from the plane, people on the ground, or possibly both. And in your morning headlines, a mom and her son are suing police in Missouri for getting roughed up in a Sam's Club. And some skateboarder decided to use a veteran's memorial as part of one of his tricks. A bald eagle is rescued and a horse race that will make you smile and get your weekend going. And we need that, David Sears. You know, we got a lot of sporting events canceled, Preakness, things like that. The big horse races all, you know, shut down mm -hmm. because of coronavirus. Well, you thought they were shut down. Uh-oh. No, 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 not yet. All right, first off, you are looking inside a sand club in St. Louis, so keep your eye on the lower right part of your screen. Police and a couple of customers get into it. The young man, Derek Gray, was there to pick up a TV he bought earlier that day. An officer followed him because he thought he was trying to steal the TV. Instead of keeping the TV, Gray and his mom decided they wanted to refund it. That's when things got out of hand. Police claim Derek assaulted an officer, resisted arrest. His mom also got a summons for interfering with a police officer. The Grays are suing the police. Marvia says she was injured and her son suffered three broken teeth, needed stitches and staples for wounds. The district attorney is investigating. The city wouldn't comment. Since it is Memorial Day this weekend, this video just got a little worse. That is a skateboarder trying to do a trick off the top of a wall of a veteran's memorial. It's taking place in San Diego. You can imagine there are some folks pretty upset about this. This is the Soledad National Veterans Memorial. It was built back in 1952. It honors living and deceased veterans. San Diego police are aware of the video and they are investigating. They're looking at it as a vandalism case. And staying in California, that's an injured bald eagle. Those folks trying to rescue the bird 
actually spotted it on the highway near Redding. There's a game warden, a few highway patrol officers, and look at that face right there. Majestic. Ooh, what a great face. They managed to cover it up, get it in that cage, and then they're going to take it to the rehab center there in Manton, California. The next jockey will be George riding the flaming flamingo. And they're off. Fun time at a senior living community. This is in Baltimore, home of the Preakness, and since the actual running of the 145th Preakness has been postponed to the coronavirus, the staff at the center decided they would stage their own race. It was a chance to get the residents outside and breathe a little fresh air at the same time, practice some social distancing. They also had some entertainment. A band showed up. It was some fun all the way around. So it's it's been, you know, what we do in the interest of safety for all of our residents um, can certainly be um, hard and frustrating. So um, we put together this opportunity for them to all get out, to be with each other, to, to re-get that vibrancy that we, um, we haven't been able to do in the interest of keeping everyone safe and healthy. It, uh, not, not sure who won, but it looked like some pretty good competition. Maybe the Pink Flamingo won by, <laughs> by a neck. By a neck. <laughs> I love it. But isn't that great? Great idea for those folks. Get them outside. Get them some exercise. Ooh, you you have to find ways to come together and deal with this. And, and have a little fun. And there's one right there. It's a good one. So Running at the bull. That's hilarious. <laughs> good stuff. See y'all. Have a good weekend. You too. Hey, you too. Thank you, David. You said <clears throat> Excuse me, 909 right now, 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A zoo that's trying to keep its customers safe and making them look cute at the same time. Just ahead, the unique masks the zoo of Cincinnati is selling. Coronavirus death toll in the country keeps rising. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. We have Whitney Wilde from CNN with the latest and what we're going to expect as we go into Memorial Day weekend. Texas is quickly opening back up and as of today, bars, bowling alley, zoo, many more things open up. Again, bowling alleys open just ahead on GMSA at nine. We're live from Bowl and Barrel at the rim to talk about their sanitation process. Not a good day on Wall Street today. The Dow is down 137 points at 24,336. The governor's mission to reopen Texas continues as of today. Bars, bingo halls, skating rinks, bowling alleys, and more are back in business. But what measures are some of these businesses with high contact points and rental equipment implementing to help stop the spread of COVID-19? Alicia Barrera is live from Bullet Barrel at the rim with more. Hi, Alicia. Hi, good morning, you guys. Well, if you want to come bowling, you know what that means. You're going to have to rent some shoes and then you're eventually going to have to touch these bowling balls. But rest assured, bowling barrels doing their best to make sure that you're safe, that your family is safe and everything's clean. With me, area director Kevin Steele joins me live. What are some of the processes that are happening behind the scenes, even stuff that happens, you know, before these customers arrive to bowling barrel? Absolutely. So we are taking every precaution to make sure that Everybody that comes to Bowling Barrel is safe. Um, we are sanitizing uh, every single ball that we use, which is a, a, a maximum of eight balls per lane just to keep it very consolidated. But we will be disinfecting uh, the outside of the ball, the ball holes, uh, the ball returns, every single chair, table, um, every single lane will be disinfected before another guest is allowed to even approach that lane. So there are some restrictions you mentioned there, reduced number of lanes, but talk to me about the shoes. The shoes, they're going to be sanitized during, after each use, and then what happens after? So yeah, so we are, we have, we are committed to sanitizing every single shoe, and we have plenty of shoes. So what we would decide to do is we will not recycle shoes for a minimum of one hour after they are sanitized just to ensure that the chemical is working and that um, we are, uh, they're absolutely clean before they go back out. Each table is going to receive, uh, they're going to have a hand sanitizer bottle. But one thing that I want to touch on is that there are specials. So you're celebrating the reopening of Bowl and Barrel. Kids, birthdays, yes. what's going on? Yeah, so we are very excited to announce that we'll be offering Kids Bowl seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 4. Um, and then also, if you had a birthday while everybody was down during COVID, come to Bowling Barrel. We've got a special surprise for you 
free bowling for up to an hour. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. Again, Bowl and Barrel opening back up today. 11 a.m. is when they open. So you just saw Sal there cleaning. Um, and this is going on behind the scenes between parties. So if you're going to be in line waiting, know that your wait time will depend on the sanitation process, but it's all for a good cause. Reporting live from Bowl and Barrel, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. All right, Alicia, thank you very much. Uh, you know what? I was looking at uh, what the offerings were for local movie theaters this mm -hmm. weekend, and one of the bigger ones in town is the Palladium out at the Rim, at the kind rim. of near where Alicia is at. I was looking at their offerings for Saturday, for example. The first Harry Potter movie is out. Uh, Jurassic World has been re-released. It is Memorial Day weekend, so we have Saving Private Ryan and American Great Sniper. Movie. That yeah. And then a couple other ones like Wonder Woman um, and The Conjuring, The Goonies, and Trolls World Tour, which was initially released on digital only. So and they have their own safety measures as well. They, can, they only do. can have so many people in the theater, and they have to sit, you know, six feet apart and all that. So exactly. Anyway, as we reopen, we'll bring you the news and let you know what happens. There are some options for sure. Justin joins us now, looking ahead to the weekend, and I know there are a lot of questions about the timing of these showers and storms pretty much yes. all weekend, right? Yeah, it, it's a messy pattern. It's a difficult pattern, one we don't see all the time. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint when and where this, this rain's going to happen. But I think we're going to zero in maybe Saturday night and during the day on Sunday. That's a day we'll look for maybe some pretty good downpours. If you missed it yesterday, uh, NOAA put out their hurricane forecast. They're, they're, think it's, they're thinking it's going to be an above average season, and it certainly looks that way. A couple factors playing into this warmer ocean water. Uh, we have more of a La Nina pattern, it looks like setting up, which usually helps uh, hurricanes, uh, or at least doesn't inhibit hurricanes from developing in the Atlantic. But right now they're calling from, for 13 to 19 named storms, six to 10 hurricanes, and three to six major hurricanes. This is above average. So just a heads up, of course, hurricane season starts here fairly soon. And speaking of the coast, if you're heading down to Porte, Corpus Christi this weekend, upper 80s, uh, we'll see a uh, little rip current. So that's a little chance of rip currents, which is good, uh, good news. And then about a 20 to 40% chance of some showers and storms. Again, I think just like here, the best chance is gonna be Sunday into Monday. So if you're heading that way, just know it could be a little bit active, especially late in the weekend. Not much going on here across the state of Texas now. We had some showers and storms earlier. Those died out around Austin. Uh, we still got some pretty active weather up there around Oklahoma with some severe weather there. But it uh, looks like things are going to be fairly quiet, especially for the first half of the day here around South Texas. We've got some cloud cover, but none of these clouds hold any rain. So it'll be mostly cloudy for now. And then look for partly cloudy conditions as we get into the afternoon. There's the situation outside. 80 degrees. Dew point is at 73. That number is so high. It is so humid out there with southeast chilly winds at 14 miles per hour. And you'll find temperatures right around 80 here in Bear County. A little bit cooler as you get up towards Bandera. 74 degrees there. And then uh, some low 80s for Katua and also Bevo checking in at 83. Uh, this morning. Humidity shows uh, dew points in the mid 70s in most spots, so the humidity is still not going anywhere. It's, it's going to be sticky uh, all the way through the foreseeable future here. And as we look at the future cast, as far as rain goes, we're not expecting much today. We're going to fast forward all the way to 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, though. And you'll notice this particular model does try to bring some storms in from the north. We've had this indication last couple days. We got some couple days ago, nothing this morning. It's possible. We can't rule it out. About a 30% chance of seeing some storms tomorrow morning. And then Saturday's pretty quiet. And then look what happens Saturday night into Sunday morning. We may get more storms coming in from Mexico. It looks like a little better chance of seeing some rain again Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then even during the day on Sunday, we still could see some pretty decent downpours. Here's the setup. And I mentioned this is sort of an interesting setup, really. Uh, a lot going on here, but it's this trough that's going to be digging south that's going to give us rain chances uh, through the weekend. But even into next week, it, it's cut off from the jet stream, sort of just meanders around. And when it does that, that's going to keep rain chances in place. Uh, so expect it to be pretty active even into next week. Forecast for today, up around 92, 30% chance of an isolated shower or storm. Actually, more like a 20% chance, but a 30% chance tonight. 30% chance on Saturday, 60% chance Saturday night, and also during the day on Sunday. And then next week, scattered chances here and there all week. We could pick up some pretty good rainfall out of this eventually, you guys, uh, when it's all said and done. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Just about 921, 80 degrees. Next on GMSA at 9, a 
Car parade for a birthday boy, but he is celebrating more than his ninth birthday. We'll show you the party full of surprises, even from space. Welcome back. It is now 924. A boy in Massachusetts just celebrated his ninth birthday, but he is celebrating an even bigger feat. Four years since he survived a multiple organ transplant. John Atwater with the ABC affiliate WCVB has more on the birthday bash that was out of this world, literally. It began with a chorus of sirens. Hey, Lucas! Happy oh. birthday, buddy! And then birthday wishes from a parade of friends. Hi, Lucas! Hi! Lucas St. Ange turned nine today, but that is not the biggest milestone he's celebrating. He is in a lot better um, yeah. place than he was four years ago. Today is his four-year anniversary of surviving a five-organ transplant. I feel amazing and awesome. And along with the celebration outside his home... Hello? Hello, this is the International Space Station. This is the International Space Station. Chris Cassidy calling us. Is this Heather? It is. How are you? He got a surprise phone call from space. Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. Well, his name is Chris Cassidy. He blasted off in... April? Lucas has always dreamed of meeting an astronaut, and on this birthday, that phone call from hundreds of miles away in space meant the world to a kid who's been through so much. It's an incredible feeling to know that he's still here, knowing all the ups and downs that this child has gone through. That was John Atwater from ABC in Boston to be CVB. Health-wise, Lucas is doing well. He has his sights on becoming an Astronaut. And he, he should. You just can be. Yeah, he is. Oh, that's adorable. Hey, talking about space, NASA is looking for people who are willing to live together with a small crew of their researchers, and they will pay you. Okay, you have to be in isolation for eight months in Moscow. Huh. NASA wants to come up with ways, ways to limit problems that come with social isolation and confinement during missions. So here's who they are looking for. You have to be a U.S. citizen between 30 and 55 years old with a graduate degree or experience as a military officer. You have to speak both Russian and English, and if you get picked, NASA says you will experience environmental aspects similar to those astronauts will probably experience on future missions to Mars and the moon. Well, I guess this uh, quarantine pandemic time could be a little practice. We're all a little qualified now. <laughs> I know, right? Except for the Russian part. I don't speak Russian. No, not yet. The Cincinnati Zoo giving wild animal lovers a way to stay safe while looking cute. They have made animal-themed face masks. Take a look at this. The zoo's gift shop has 14 different animal-themed masks for sale on their website. Pandas, cheetahs, sloths, giraffes, and, of course, the zoo's popular and adorable hippo Fiona. Fiona, we remember her. Masks come in adult, youth, and toddler sizes. All proceeds will go to supporting the closed zoo and its animals there in Cincinnati. So 927, 80 degrees more ahead on GMSA at night on your Friday morning. Even the Royals are joining the digital side of things during this pandemic, this time with a virtual bingo. We'll have details coming up on GMSA at night. Poppy Warren is a hero honor. The next half hour, Sarah Costa tells us the meaning behind the poppy. And a check of the roadways as we head to break. There's 410 at 151. No problems to report there. We'll be right back. 930, welcome back. Memorial Day marks the symbolic start of summer. In typical years, there are barbecues, outdoor gatherings with family and friends, and trips to the beach. But COVID-19 is changing how we Americans are spending this holiday weekend. CNN's Whitney Wild joins us live from Washington, D.C. And Whitney, what are the experts saying about getting out and being safe this weekend and even throughout the summer? Well, they're saying, look, the coronavirus doesn't have to completely edge out fun. You can still go outside. You don't have to stay locked in your house. It is Memorial Day weekend after all. Hopefully the weather will be good all across the country. So what they're saying is, look, go out, have fun, but be smart about it. Wear a mask in some cases, social distance, because as we we are learning a little bit more about the makeup of people with coronavirus, we're learning that about a third of people with coronavirus are asymptomatic, and that's making that social distancing all the more important. U.S. death toll from COVID-19 is approaching 95,000. The CDC just revised its estimates for how many people get the disease but show no symptoms. So what is the CDC saying about coronavirus now, Whitney? 
Exactly. So what they're saying now, again, is that it is about a third of people who are asymptomatic who have coronavirus. And what that's also showing is that the greater mortality rate across the, the entire spectrum of people who might contract coronavirus is about 0.4 percent. However, that changes depending on the demographic. Does certain groups are more susceptible to mortality than other groups, depending on age in some cases. So that is really just the broadest estimate. But again, it can change depending on uh, depending on what group, you know, someone might fall into. But again, that's why that social distancing is so important, because a third of people seem to be asymptomatic, Mark and Leslie. Well, we know summer camps and summer schools have been canceled for so many American kids. But as schools look towards the fall, they're contemplating on how to keep the kids safe. What are pediatricians saying about how we should prepare for school in the fall? So what they're saying is basically stuff kids' backpacks with hand sanitizer, uh, with anything that can sanitize a surface, for example. School might look a lot different in the fall when kids come back. So very likely you'll see smaller classrooms, socially distanced desks. As you may have seen photos of that already in place in some areas. And then further, there is some talk about what would be sort of like an A-B schedule. So, for example, some kids might be going to school in the morning hours, other kids in the afternoon hours. But the goal here is to really limit the large large groups of kids, especially for some kids who might be more vulnerable or might be passing it on to parents who are more vulnerable. That's the biggest concern here, Mark and Leslie. All right, seeing as Whitney Wild, I uh, hope you've had a decent week, Whitney, and I hope you have a great weekend as well. Good seeing you. Taking you back outside with live cam. So we're tracking some storms that are pretty tricky. Yeah, the pattern's just sort of tricky. It's hard to really pin down where all this is going to take place. But what we do know is that we're going to see some rain somewhere along the way over the weekend, and some of it could be heavy. So we've got to be very careful. As you remember, Memorial Days uh, in the past have not been so good to us weather-wise. Let's first start with some headlines here. We've got isolated storms today, and then tomorrow, I think same story, isolated storms. But we'll have a better chance of maybe more scattered activity late. And then Sunday and Monday, if we're going to pick out some days where our rain chances are probably elevated a little bit, those will be the days. So we could see some pockets of heavy rain there. Some people could see some uh, good flooding rains. Uh, here's a look at the radar this morning. We had a little complex up there around, uh, well, between San Angelo and Austin. That uh, really fell apart right along I-35. So we really have not seen much in the way of rain. Uh, but we are seeing some clouds, and it is humid out there. Uh, humidity will stay up all day long. So we will be talking about a heat index today. 82 in New Braunfels, 80 at the airport, 79 Rio Medina, 80 in Hondo, 90 by 3 o'clock, 92 for a high today, and a look for a 20% chance of rain. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Checking Transcad. Normal traffic flow 281, a winding way on the far north side. A well, poppy worn is a hero honored. It is the universal symbol of remembering those who have died defending our country. But why the poppy? Sarah Acosta joins us now live from home to explain and how USAA is using poppies to honor our fallen heroes. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and I, I wondered the same thing, but after talking to the vice president of USA, he beautifully explained to me how the poppy is used as a symbol of significance, of remembrance. So back in World War I, an Army Canadian doctor buried his friend in Flanders Field, and he wrote a poem about it. Well, that poem has since become very famous. The author wrote about how poppies blow among the many rows of the crosses when he was burying his friend. Now that poppy is known as a symbol of remembrance worldwide. It's through those poppies that USAA has honored fallen heroes on Memorial Day for the past two years through a temporary poppy wall of honor installation on the National Mall near the Korean Way. The wall is filled with 645,000 artificial poppies, one for each life lost in the line of duty since World War I. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, that event will be virtual this year. We as a country need to show how much we respect that and how much we value those that give up their lives for us. So it goes to our national character, and it's critically important that we take yet but one day a year to remember those fallen. The virtual poppy wall can be found on poppyandmemory.com. Now, you are also encouraged to share what Memorial Day means to you on social media using the hashtag honor through action and USAA 
um, is just really encouraging for you to get on social media and talk about the importance of Memorial Day using that hashtag honor through action throughout the weekend. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. It is such a beautiful tribute. Thank you so much, Sarah. Moving on this morning, artificial intelligence is now guessing things like our personalities based on something as simple as a routine Leslie move. <laughs> Selfies. Selfies. That's right. That's what they're saying. Facial recognition technology can determine a person's personality by analyzing an emotionless selfie. They built an artificial neural network that assessed 128 different factors of a person's face, like the width of their mouth and the height of their lips and their eyes. Use data from these readings to categorize a person based on five personality traits, consciousness or conscientiousness, neuroticism, <laughs> whew, extroversion, agreeableness, whatever, and openness. Here's the thing, when compared to questionnaires filled out by the volunteers, the AI was accurate 58% of the time, and they said pure chance would get it right 50% of the time, and humans are less consistent than the facial recognition method. So why would you even want this? Hmm? Yeah, why would you? Well, I'll tell you why, because they said one of the great things about this is it can um, do a couple of things. It can help bosses determine if this is a person that they want to hire. A more suitable job applicant. Yeah, yeah and also improves the selection of best matches for dating websites. Mm -hmm. And it can, yeah, so find you your best date. So let's see what it reveals about you. Personality reveals the kind of lives we're likely to lead. A conscientious individual is prone to good physical health mm -hmm. and more harmonious relationships. Extroverts are happier and more likely to have tattoos, for instance. <laughs> really? Neurotics experience more mental health problems. Uh-oh, so you want to avoid those that are neurotics, I guess, I guess. <laughs> Open-minded people command higher earnings and agreeable types are popular and have lots of friends. So I agree with that. Depends on the kind of job you want. Right. Y y you may want someone who's neurotic if it's like a detail-oriented job, right? It's possible. It's possible. But maybe not. But maybe not. There's always a catch. We'll just move on. <laughs> yeah, we will. Right now, 939, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Well, a different point of view of the Harry Potter story. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. All the details about a play that will be streaming this weekend. Hello, everyone. This is your Dantley Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. Attention shoppers, there'll be no Amazon Prime Day this summer. Amazon is starting to push the event to September. That according to a report in the Wall Street Journal, the two-day sales bonanza is typically held in July. A strain on the company's warehouses is causing the delay. Amazon will also once again start allowing unlimited shipments of non-essential goods to warehouses, all part of an effort to return to pre-pandemic business operations. Meanwhile, Spotify joining a wave of companies telling their employees they can work from home until the end of the year. The streaming Giant announcing Thursday that all of their employees are free to work from home until 2021. This is the coronavirus continues to drag on. The company will continue to monitor the situation, and when it does decide to open, it'll take a phased approach to ensure safety. The policy applies to all 79 countries where Spotify has offices. And if you can't remember the last time you used your Netflix account, well, you might want to log right back in. The TV streaming company announced that they will start to cancel dormant accounts that haven't been used in over a year. As a courtesy, Netflix will email those account holders asking if they want to keep their account, and if they don't reply, Netflix will go ahead and cancel their plan. Not even 1% of Netflix accounts even meet this criteria. Netflix says they'll start the process next week. And that's your Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from New York City. It's now 944. Long weekend for a lot of yeah. folks out there. It sounds like Part of it's going to be a little bit wet. Yes, rain chance is still in the forecast this weekend, so you may have to dodge some showers, some storms, especially as we get into Sunday. Before we jump into that forecast, though, we do have a junior meteorologist this morning. This is Brindley. She's five years old, and she likes her accessories. Take a look. Hello, my name is Brindley from Lavernia, and today it's partly cloudy and warm. There will be no rain and a perfect day for the hot. Well, aren't you just as cute Aww. as can be? That's I love hat. your hat. Yeah, it's a good look. Perfect spring accessory. And she's Absolutely. very articulate. Yes, very well done, Brindley. And we need some more junior meteorologists. Send them in. You can email me, jhorn at uh, ksn.com. Okay, let's jump into the forecast now. And on a more somber note, uh, I do want to mention that uh, this is uh, coming up on the 24th. It'll be the five-year anniversary of the Wimberley flood. You'll remember the Blanco River rose rapidly 
Uh, it was over Memorial Day weekend. We saw quite a bit of rain. It's a good reminder that uh, these floods can happen very quickly around here. So we got to be careful. And I think we could see some heavy rain over the weekend. That's not to say we're going to see flooding, but we just got to be on the lookout in case uh, there are some pockets of heavier rain. Right now, starting to see those clouds thin out a little bit. 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 73. Southeast Julie winds at about 14 miles per hour. And you can see the cloud cover here sort of streaming in. Uh, I, I think this will thin out a little bit more. So we'll probably be looking at mo uh, partly cloudy skies uh, this afternoon. Temperatures are already plenty warm. 82 degrees in Randolph, 79 to gain 82 in New Braunfels. We didn't cool down much this morning at all. And as a result, uh, we're already on our well, we're already well into the 80s in a lot of spots. 83 Katua, 75 Rock Springs, 80 right now in Del Rio. Dew points are just way up there. When you start seeing dew points in the upper 70s, that's when it just really, really is muggy or oppressive. And uh, so these dew points are not fun to deal with. And it's also creating a heat index. This is what it feels like outside right now. We're, we already have a heat index even at this hour. 84 here in San Antonio. 90 is what it feels like in Gonzales and 91 in Pleasanton. And you can bet that heat index is going to be with us pretty much all day long. So the future cast doesn't show much today. This is around 5 o'clock. Eh, pretty quiet. Most of the models sort of agree with this. I can't rule out an isolated shower or storm, but there's nothing really to trigger anything uh, for today. As we get into tonight, though, we get into one of those similar situations we've been looking at last couple nights. Uh, could we see a complex of showers and storms come in from the north or perhaps the west? Uh, it's possible. I mean, this model does show a little bit of something coming in from the north, so we'll have to watch it overnight. And we do have a 30% chance of rain in the forecast to account for that. Now let's go into Saturday night, Sunday morning. This is midnight Sunday. We will look like it looks like get a line of storms coming out of Mexico and working towards South Texas into Sunday morning. This could bring some heavy rain with it, and uh, this certainly bears some watching too. And I think that's probably a window that we want to watch for uh, our, our best rain chances. And then even into Sunday, I still think we'll have some more rain chances around. Uh, here's the upper level pattern, and it's it's kind of an odd one. We got one little system moving away, but this is the trough that we're going to watch, and this is the one that's going to dip south and it's going to get cut off from the jet stream and then just sort of sit there for much of next week. So we've got more rain chances even after the weekend. It's not going away. Forecast for today, 92 degrees, uh, about a 20% chance of rain. Actually, southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then a 30% chance tonight, 30% chance on Saturday. We're going to up that to a 60% chance Saturday night, Sunday morning. We'll see if some of that rain lingers around on Sunday. And keep in mind, it's not going to rain all weekend, uh, but the, there will be scattered showers and storms around. And then look for more scattered stuff on Monday. And as I mentioned, even into next week, the rain will be here. Guys. 948, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. A play about the events of the Harry Potter stories, but told from a different point of view, begins streaming this weekend. CNN's Rick Damagella waved his wand to bring us this report. An American tradition continues. The National Memorial Day concert goes online. Hosted by Joe Montaigne and Gary Sinise with performances from Cynthia Erivo and Trace Adkins, the event airs on PBS and streams on the PBS and Capitol Concerts Facebook and YouTube pages Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Gibson Guitars has launched a new live streaming series. Epiphone for Every Stage debuted this week with Austin, Texas guitarist Emily Wolf and will feature Gina Chavez on Memorial Day and Jackie Venson and Cody Parks in the coming weeks. New episodes stream live Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Epiphone's Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channels. For seven years, a certain boy wizard went to magic school. The puffs were also there. Bye. Fans of Wizards, Witches, and Butterbeer will want to grab their wands for this one. The off-Broadway production Puffs, or Seven Increasingly Eventful Years at a Certain School of Magic and Magic, is a play about the events Harry, Ron, and Hermione were involved in, but from the Hufflepuffs' point of view. The play streams on Playbill.com starting Friday at noon Eastern, running through May 31st, with a portion of the proceeds going to Frontline Foods, supporting local restaurants affected by the the pandemic. Reporting as a proud Hufflepuff in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Huh, that's funny. <laughs> 
Uh, way to go, Rick. Uh, over 100 <laughs> grocery store shoppers in a market in Palmerton, Pennsylvania, were handed a particular flyer at checkout. The flyer was to let clients know that the cost of their food was covered. It happened at Country Harvest Family Markets during the time set aside for elderly customers and those with compromised immune systems. The bills were covered by Carbon County Community Foundation with a little help from the store. A lot of emergency vehicles, motorcycles and cars formed a lengthy parade in the northern Illinois community of Lake County to honor Charles Kelly, a World War II veteran who turned 103 yesterday. And just so you know, Kelly not only survived Pearl Harbor, but he survived the Battle of Guadalcanal and the sinking of his ship. Kelly says he's the lucky one. Well, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge cheered up a group of uh, care home residents earlier this week by playing virtual bingo with them. The British Royals joined residents from the Shire Hall Care Home and Cardiff via video, video call I should say, as they played bingo in the Holmes Cinema Room. The Duke and Duchess took their turn as guest callers before speaking to residents and workers about the impact of COVID-19 on the operation of the home. Did they get this idea from Matthew McConaughey? I think so. I think, I it's, think they they're all too. catching on. Everybody's just copying yeah. Matthew. All sorry. right, all right, all right. Yeah, sorry, Royals, you're late to the party. But that's a sweet gesture nonetheless. Yes, it but is. One more look at Trans Guide. No problems at 281 and Winding Way. Uh, as you head up towards those big flyover ramps there at 1604. Let's take another look at the forecast. It's hot and humid, 83 degrees right now. We're going to be up around 92 this afternoon. Just some isolated stuff today. A little better chance maybe tonight. 30% uh, chance tomorrow. And then some better chances Saturday night into Sunday and really much of next week. What to say instead of Happy Memorial Day? Because we've already covered that there's confusion about it. People keep confusing Memorial Day with Veterans, with Veterans Day. Day. You're not thanking Veterans Monday. No, you're remembering and paying homage to the, the memory of those who gave up their life for our country. So you're not supposed to say Happy Memorial Day. So what do you say? Some people get confused by this. So here are some ideas according to an article on KSAT.com. Try something like this. Enjoy your weekend, but I want to know that you, that I will be remembering what this holiday is all about. That's a good one. Enjoy your weekend, and I will be thinking about those of you who, those I should say, who are no longer with us. I will be taking a moment this weekend to honor those that served our nation and are no longer with us. And NPR is suggesting, I hope you have a meaningful day. I like that one. That's mm -hmm. a good one. While it's certainly not wrong to wish someone a happy Memorial Day, it's safe to assume most people are well-intentioned. It seems, though, taking a few minutes to say the right thing actually mean much more. So remember, it's not thank you for your service and all that because it's looking at those who have already passed away and honoring their memory, not about thanking those who are currently serving I or like, have served and still alive. I like this last line. It says, after all, the day is about more than backyard parties and barbecues. Let's prove it by taking a moment to examine our words. And remember, 3 p.m. on Monday is when the remembrance moment of silence is. Yes. So keep that in mind. And we hope you have a very safe Memorial Day weekend. Be good. We'll see you back here for the news at noon. Have a great day, everybody.